Hello all, welcome to rotainis.com. In this session, we'll discuss about how do we invoke a BICC job using SOAP UI. So let's get into agenda. So we'll understand what is the SOAP visual details for the BICC and the header details like the parameters and the header information and how do we invoke the SOAP UI, like the SOAP visual using SOAP UI, the request details as well as the response information and the ESS job details and the extracted files for the particular job which we invoked in the UCM. Okay. So now the first thing is like uh, what are the actions it provides, right? So the actions generally allowed by this particular SOAP visual for the BICC are like uh, you can extract the data as well as you can schedule a job. So now in this particular one, you can observe this particular visual URL and the web service name is like uh, here. It's like a, uh, with the prefix after the cloud instance URL like a BI slash ESS, ESS web service, question mark, visual, right? So now here in this example, you can observe this is my Cloud, cloud instance URL followed by the BI ESS, ESS web service visual. Now, this is a visual and there are a couple of very important parameters you have to provide for this particular SOAP, right? So the first basic thing is like uh, the security, nothing but user credentials as well as timestamp. And also there are a couple of parameters you have to mention. The major things are in like um, the class name, extract job type, the Vivo extract, data store list. This is all information we have to provide. And also you have optional information so we can see one of the requests so that we can easily understand what is the basic content we have to provide while invoking this particular SOAP web service and you can observe this is a request which i provided and i will show you from soap ai also this request once you provide this request once you run this particular request you can observe it sends a response if at all if everything is successful it will generate the response with a request ID of the job it, it submitted. So now we can observe this is one of the request ID which it mentioned in the response. And we can observe the status of this particular job details from the ESS screen or you can from observe from the BICC screen also. So you can observe in this particular example here. This is the schedule ID and uh, the status also and the storage, storage information who submitted, when it was submitted, what is the job type and all those things you can observe. And also you can observe the similar information from the ESS screen also. and you can also get the job data like as we like whenever the extract schedule or job I, job of the ESS is successful, we can observe the similar information from the UCM also for the respective job ID. So here you can, if you just go to UCM, like uh, nothing but the cl cloud URL slash CS, you can click on search and you can observe that based on the request ID also you can get it. Now you can observe this is our request ID, the like a 6963627 and you can observe the zip file which will have the the data extract okay so now let us see all the information now in a practical way so the first basic thing is what is the cloud instance url of this particular ucm job right so now this is our visual url so let me get my fusion application so this depends upon the url of your fusion applications urls right so now let us say this is our fusion application url now and um, so here you can observe so this is our url and then what we have to do is we have to concatenate slash the respective information. So we'll just get from our slide. So now this is the one. You just concatenate this one. Okay. Now if you just copy and you can open the same visual in from the browser, it has to provide some external content. It means this your visual is correct. Once you are once you get the visual, what we can do is you can go to the SOAP UI project. So now this is my existing project which I already tested tested. You know, like uh, the same one, the same web service which I tested already. Uh, let me show you that information also. One minute. So now what we can do is if it are, if you are new to SOAP UI, what you can do is just open the SOAP UI. Once you open the SOAP UI, click on SOAP project. And you can let us, I'll just mention it as BICC test and mention the visual URL here and click on okay so this will try to validate the visual and it will get all the information for us it will get all the information for us and this it has a lot number of methods here if you observe in this one ess web service soap http we have a couple of methods so in this one we have to invoke a job called submit request and request so double click on this one it will generate by default it will generate a respective xml of this one so now here, if you observe the request parameter, as of now, it has not provided any information. So we have to provide the parameter name as well as value. So I already prepared the visual of the SOAP sample XML here. So I'll try to explain one by one parameter from this one. So the first basic thing is in the SOAP environment header, you can observe the username credentials as well as the timestamp expiry. And then in the submit, in the submit request, 
in the submit request you have to mention the description of the job job definition you have to mention you have to go with the same exist like uh, the same hard coded values i mean you have to provide the exact values then only it will work the job definition you have to provide the same thing and uh, here the parameter here if you observe the first one is string this class name then the this is the one the value for the class name and then the sys application then the ba cloud adapter and uh, job type extract job type it is a vivo extract and your data store list, yeah, this is a place where you have to mention your respective the Vivo information. Okay, you can provide multiple values also. And the final one is the storage list. So here I mentioned UCM. Okay, so I'll just copy this sample XML and here I'll just place it. Okay, now a couple of changes you have to do here. The first thing is in the authentication, you have to add the user authentication, add new authentication, so click on basic and select type is basic, click on okay. Now here you just mention Cassie Brown. And according to my instance, so I'll just mention Cassie Brown and this is my credential for Cassie Brown. And also there is one important parameter, click on WSA. So here you make sure this particular option is selected randomly, generate message ID. And other one is here, just simply right click here. And as of now, you can observe this timestamp is already there. Just remove it and again, right click here and click on add timestamp just mention around 2000 here and click on OK. Now just try clicking on hitting this run button. Let's see what happens now. So you can observe this particular response here. It generated a job ID. Now let's observe this information from the ESS screen. So I'll just go to Fusion application instance and you can observe here it generated this one right. 4071 it is ending with 4071 so it generated a job with a job id ending with 4071 it is succeeded and similar information you can just get it from the bicc like a b like a, the fusion er the url for the bicc is like a, your fusion app url slash biacm in that you just go to the manage extract schedules so that will be here manage the third third icon manage extract schedules click here and you can observe the latest one also. Just refresh here. Okay. It can observe this is the one. Six six nine six four zero seven one. And similarly, you can find the similar information from the UCM also. The fusion application URL followed by CS. Just mention CS. And here, as of now, just simply click on search. So we may not find it very easily. Now maybe yeah, in the in our scenario, as we are the only one which ran. We are able to find it and the top three files are related to our 6964071. So whenever you run any ES like a BICC job, it will generate three files. This zip file will have the information about the content and will have the information about the status of which file it is and what is the status of it. So it will get all the information from these three files. And other other way also you can find out. Let us say assume that a couple of developers are running the same thing. What you can do is you can just search with OBIA percentile like this, and you can get all the BICC jobs which ran so far. Okay, so now as of now, what we have seen is like we have seen how do we run, how do we run a BICC job from SOAP UI. Okay, so once you get like if at all if you want to validate the content of it, right? So I already downloaded one of the example of this information. So you can observe here. So once you get the zip file of that, right? So yeah. So first one is JSON. You can observe in the JSON. It will have the information about the status of it, what is the data storage it extracted, and what is the status of it, success, failure, kind of thing, and the manifest file. Okay, and it tells you which file it is down, which file it has downloaded, and also other one. You can observe the actual zip file, and this is the zip file, the the text content or the CSV content of the file which it downloaded from the. Fusion application instance for the BICC extract. Okay, as of now it is not having any data, just have a column. So it all depends upon the extract setting what we have selected. Okay, so this is all about you know like invoking a BICC job from the Fusion like uh, using Scope UI. Okay, thank you.